Hi, I'm Tom Cherry Holmes, and I'm just a hacker having fun. This video is part of our Learning Atari Fig 4th series. In the last video, you saw how we could take and create words to manipulate various aspects of the display list, reading individual parts of it, writing individual parts of it back to the active display list, etc. And that's all well and good. You can make useful things in using those words in and of themselves in your actual programs. But fourth is all about taking and making those words into something more useful specific to the task at hand. And to making and to being able to take and take small and low level concepts and making them easier to understand. We saw how in the previous video we could do things like looking at the display list using C at etc. And we saw how we could take and write new values to the display list using C exclamation point. And that's all well and good. But what if instead of using the DLSC at over and over and over to look at one byte at a time, you could look at something a lot more verbose and a lot more symbolic, something that actually would make sense to uh, be more descriptive. You can. I actually added a word for that in my toolkit called DList View All. And as you can see here, it's actually quite amazing when you look at it. It gives you a quick jump through of the display list here and allows you to jump all the way back. And at the same time, what if you could define a new display list entirely symbolically, like this? Display list, new word, give the display list a new, na a new name, new DL. And then we start describing the display list in terms of symbols, such as saying that there are three three sets of eight blank scan lines. That we have a load memory instruction set going directly to CIO's screen memory right here. That we then have 23 further lines of mode 4 as the end of it. Then to top it all off, we say that the display list is done to put in the appropriate JVB back to the start of display list. Really neat, huh? What we just did there, we literally took and defined a whole set of display list variables using symbolic words very quickly, very efficiently. And if we look at this using the dump utility here, we actually see that it took care of all of the details for us. Putting in the three sets of blank scan lines, putting in the appropriate LMS instruction with the but with the bits appropriately set, putting in the addresses in the correct byte order, putting in 23 mode fours all in a row. Then, at the end of it all, creating the for uh, creating the 41 to jump all the way back. 41, 45 here. See. Pretty cool, huh? Well, that in and of itself, you can then take and voila, there's our new display list right there, ready to go. We put it back. There we go. 
How does it do this? Well, let's go ahead and take a look and let's break this down a little bit. To start, we literally go into, we start at screen four of our source code listings. And we see that we have a whole set of constants here for defining, yeah, literally constants, each of those, so I can take and reference them symbolically later. These are used on screen five to test for mode to test for mode bits. This uses a fourth word and which takes two parameters to take and do a logical and of the two sets of numbers and output the final result. I'm using it to mask bits, which we then subsequently test with the equals. So you to light so it allows you to do some nice things like say I want to make see if the uh, 42 has an LMS bit in it. If it does, it will return 1. If it doesn't, it will return 0. Things like that. This is further used here, a bit further down the line. And we have a wonderful way to do D-list mode. Let's say I want to get the mode line of a bit for example again the LMS bit here and I want to get the mode that's being used here oops sorry hex <laughs> and as you can see here it strips off everything but the mode bits left alone <laughs> the same thing here for DLIST 3 DLIST 3 is a wonderful little word here that literally given an offset in the display list we can literally decode an entire not only uh, get the uh, get the appropriate instruction but also its address in one big swoop See. This is built on even further with a series of prompts to quickly be able to take and uh, display formatted addresses to display the current mode, etc. And all of these are just used as prompts. And you can tell from the end of display address, for example, there's a u dot, so it expect uh, and from the stack notation that it expects a number here for the address and a byte for the mode here. So, nice convenience, just convenience methods. Same thing with display mode. Same thing. Display jump and display JVB are simple prompts. Moving on to screen 8, we have a word that builds on the logic words that I did, the is h scroll, is v scroll, etc., to take and quickly display extra bits for a given, for a given uh, display list byte. Let's go ahead and just turn them all on and display a result. Oh, sorry, hex. As you can see here, quickly, H scroll, V scroll, LMS, DLI, and a more realistic example, just displaying LMS, or a an entry with LMS and DLI exposed, etc. This moves on to our next screen, screen nine. to see if an instruction has blanks or not. Yes. Not. 
And blanks is actually very, very interesting because I needed a way to be able to return the number of blanks given by an instruction bit. For this, I actually opted to break out into assembler. And for this, you'll see that normally, as compared to normal assembler, assembler in fourth is backwards. You specify the parameters first, and then the opcode. Parameters first, then the opcode. And all this is right here, it simply shifts everything over a few times to make the uh, unwanted bits, you know, to basically just say, okay, ba -da 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 -da, push it over and uh, get the number of blanks. Now, this only does half the job here, because one of the things that happens here uh, is I do all of this, and then I jump to a routine that's present in the fourth interpreter, as referenced by a word called push 0a, to uh, push the value that's on the accumulator onto the fourth stack. Conversely, I use uh, col uh, the uh, comma x addressing mode, to uh, essentially pull the last value off of the stack really quickly and then operate on it. So the thing is is that this adds a value on and doesn't consume one so I had to take and wrap it into a fourth word to make it a bit more convenient to deal with. DL blanks calls blanks then swaps the result and drops it and increments it by one so that uh, seven zero becomes eight etc nice and convenient there and again display blanks is just another prompt word now display one by literally is uh, just a simple display a single byte instruction a mode whatever it's very easy to use it simply returns back mode 2. If this were, for example, a uh, another, let's say, for example, mm, two, two. mode 6 with H scroll, etc, 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 etc. Just a quick way to basically, uh, to, to quickly decode the instructions. And all this is, we check for if it's a blank, then we display the blank, then we use the display blanks routine to display uh, what this is, etc. Otherwise, we display it as a mode, display extra bits, etc. Building on the words that I have before, it basically allows for this and for this here to be just to be a lot more compact and a lot easier to read. We then add another one, analogous for three byte instructions. The difference here is we check for jumps. If it's a jump, we display jump. If it's a JVB, we display JVB. If it's a mode, we then display the mode and any extra bits that might be here. We then take and display any ad, uh, we then take and display the address because all three byte instructions have an address and this happens outside the scope of the if. The only other part of this equation that really needs to be dealt with, this leaves us with two, with two instructions that need to be dealt with. Display line counter, which simply takes and you give it a number and it simply outputs a right justified version of that number in my case with four places for four possible places is three byte it's just a quick way of saying is this a three byte instruction